Hey everyone, my name is Riley. I am with the Decodable team. We are a cloud streaming compute company. And what that means is we do stream processing, uh, I mean transformation of data that's in flight instead of at rest. I wanna walk through something today that's uh, been asked for a, a bunch of times and I'm finally getting around to recording it, which is uh, kind of an apple apples comparison of the user experience of creating a pipeline, first in Decodable and then in Kinesis Data Analytics. Um, I'll get into a little bit later why we chose Kinesis Data Analytics as this comparison and some of the others you could compare as well. So a uh, quick walkthrough on Decodable. We are looking right now at connections. Connections are the way that data either comes into Decodable, aka source, or ways that data leaves Decodable, aka a sync. Here we have uh, data coming from this uh, data gen. The data gen is basically just throwing in data in one big string it's got a bunch of fields, but they're all compacted into one big string at the moment. We're going to parse that out. It's a pretty common uh, kind of example of pipeline here. You can see here as part of our, our uh, data lineage here, you, we're at the top, the stream saying connected to data gen outbound to one stream. We click that, we say, all right, so we have a stream name Envoy Raw. Stream are like a Kafka topic. It's basically just moving the data. That's all streams do. And they move them to pipelines and they move them to connect connections. And that's it. We can see here that the data is coming from the data gen. We can see that right now it's being uh, sent out to uh, float over to Kinesis Sync. Beautiful. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and say new pipeline. Now it's going to ask us, where's the data coming from? Envoy raw, which is the stream that we're just looking at. We click next and it's asking us, well, where do you want the output of this, uh, this transformation to go? We're going to skip this for now because we're actually going to have decodable be smart and tell us, uh, automatically create the schema and the, the stream for us, uh, on the other side of this. So I'm going to, uh, say, let's say insert into a stream called HTTP events demo 30, beautiful. And this code basically takes that, like I said, the, the long string and then breaks it up into a bunch of pieces, um, individual fields. And this checkbox right here says, yes, go ahead and create this, the output stream for me. We're going to click, click next. It wants to know a quick name for this pipeline. No problem. Great. Click create pipeline. Beautiful. So we can see it's going on here. I'm going to go ahead and click start. This usually takes a couple minutes because in the background, what we're doing is we're spinning up uh, new Flink tasks. Um, and speaking of Flink, that was the reason that uh, today we're going to go through uh, Kinesis Data Analytics as well. Can, uh, Flink and Decoto, sorry, Kinesis Data Analytics and Decoto will both use Flink under the covers. Um, and we're, we're going to use uh, Flink SQL essentially on both sides. So when we get to it, um, it is a fairly apples to apples comparison. At the bottom here, I'm going to just walk you through two quick things while we're waiting for this task to start. The first is uh, I clicked start preview session. This usually takes 10 to 15 seconds and they'll start kicking out the data that was coming in that raw format from the data gem. Going through that stream gets to our pipeline here and the pipeline breaks it into a bunch of pieces um, so that you can actually see the individual fields as you can see here, cast into things like timestamps or strings and integers, etc. The other thing I'd want to show you here on the right hand side, uh, there's a stream catalog, uh, you can see the, the data just arrived. So here's their timestamp, here's their method, here's the original path, just like we see timestamp method, original path, etc. So that is what the preview does, it gives you a good good view of the data going. Uh, next, you can see in the stream catalog, uh, and you can do searches here. Um, and also the other thing about stream catalog that's super helpful is if you're writing this code right now and you're thinking, oh, geez, what was that format of that input stream? Or what was that format of the output, output stream? You can actually see the schemas for all the streams right here in your view. Now, uh, one thing I do wanna say is because we're using SQL on both sides, um, SQL is not always identical everywhere you go. It's, it's usually pretty close, but never exactly the same. One of the things that we added was this Grok function, uh, which is super useful. We kind of adopted this that allows you to, uh, pull, uh, pull data out of, um, each individual, uh, field 
and separate it all. Uh, there isn't a exact equivalent of this on the Kinesis Data Analytics side. Uh, so we end up having to use regex and uh, that obviously is a little bit more difficult. Uh, here we go. So our uh, data is running and you can see right here that it's in green and we're happy and we can see the outbound stream, uh, the data coming through here and you can see we've automatically created our uh, schema for that stream. Okay, well that's everything on this side. So let's click over to the AWS side. Okay, here we're back of setting up the exact same pipeline in Kinesis. So to recap, we have uh, data being piped through Decodable to Kinesis into this stream called Envoy Raw. Uh, this is uh, data that's just in a long string format. There's no fields. There's, I guess there's one field. Um, and you can see this, this data being piped through here. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We want to go over here and first things first, we want to create a new output stream. So we're going to create a stream and we're going to call it, uh, let me check my code. We call this demo output table. Um, now we're going to call it output stream. There we go. Awesome. So the rest of this we can just accept and that should be just fine um take a couple seconds let that run next step there we go uh we're going to go down to the analytics applications um and really what this is under the covers this is all flink right so this is all open source um and they give you options for the versions you want to run they give you options for uh configuration application tagging um, and also you can do uh, production or development uh, in terms of uh, performance and cost. So we're gonna click create. Hopefully we gotta name this. So let's call this uh, Envoy Demo. There we go. Click create and we are on our way. This can take a little bit because they're spinning up some Flink tasks and that kind of thing. Okay, there it is. Now there's a bunch of configuration uh, options. You know, one you know, major difference between how Decodable approaches the customer experience here is uh, they're really giving you open source link at the end of the day. So they are gonna give you options in terms of uh, monitoring and logs. They're gonna give you options in terms of snapshotting your jobs. They're going to give you options in terms of your runtime, your checkpoint and configuration, checkpoint and interval, uh, parallelism, par parallelism per KPU, automatic scaling, um, networking, that kind of thing. So they're really revealing uh, all of these kinds of semantics in terms of exactly once, watermarking, all of that is going to be, uh, you know, basically your job to configure at the end of the day. Uh, on the decodable side, we try to really just do all that in the background and make it truly no ops. So here's the next thing we're gonna to try to do here. Um, now that we have this app created, uh, we're gonna to try to, one thing you can do actually, we'll just go over this real quick. So you can write a bunch of code and you can just submit it here as like a jar out of S3. Um, but actually what we're gonna do is try to use their SQL, SQL options here, which I believe are over here in the studio. Okay, there we go. So, um, if you try to click on the SQL legacy button, they'll say, hey, don't do this. Go to Data Analytics Studio. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to click on Studio right there, and we're going to say, hey, we need to create a new notebook. All right, so we're going to call this no notebook demo notebook. Great. Spelled notebook correctly. Marvelous. Um, and then we're going to choose a Glue database, which we don't have Glue database. If you're not familiar with Glue, it's kind of an ETL schema tool. Um, there's more to it, but uh, just to kind of give you a primer. And then here under database name, we're going to call this uh, demo database. We're going to create a database object. Awesome. Um, now that we have a database object, we also do need a table object. So we're going to create a 
table. You can see add table manually. And we're going to call this, uh, let me check my code, uh, demo input table. And again, what they're doing here is uh, obviously Kinesis and Kafka work in terms of streams. Um, however, Flink, which is running here, uh, is uh, there's when you look at the SQL that o open source Flink offers, the it, it really works in terms of tables. So they're creating a table abstraction for Flink to be able to work on the Kinesis stream. So we're going to say yes. We're going to say, hey, it's coming from Kinesis. Um, and then we're going to choose Envoy Raw. There we go. Next, uh, JSON is our format. Okay, next. Got it. Um, and actually, we should define the column on the schema here, right? So this is just a value in string. So we'll do that. And then, okay. So we've got our schema defined. And now we're going to also create our output. And we're going to name that demo output table. Um, click next. Again, it's Kinesis, and then we're going to say that is the demo output stream. And then we're going to say next and JSON. Great. Okay. And then we need to create, you know, on this side, we'll get to it, but um, because they don't have the Grok, uh, we were trying to figure out what is the, the, the most convenient and smooth way uh, in Kinesis to actually parse. Um, but we really struggled actually, um, and I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're just going to have, we're instead of, uh, parsing the entire, uh, data, we're going to basically just strip out the first, uh, field, which is the timestamp. And we're just going to name that one value for now. Okay. Got it. And that should be good tables to be set the table schemas all right so now we got to go back to our notebook um so we can refresh this say yes we want to go to that database all right great um so in order to create a job we had to create a notebook uh and the notebook required we created a table which required we created a database so we're kind of multiplying objects here let's make sure that this is actually yeah this is actually running so we'll give this a little bit. There it goes. Thank you. And then we're going to open this in Apache Zeppelin. Oh, must, must run it first. This can take a little bit. While that's still running, I realized that I did not switch which uh, tab I was sharing. So really quickly, I'll show you. In uh, Glue, you click Add Database, you type in your database name, etc. Uh, under Tables, you can say, hey, I want to add a table manually. We can call this table Bob, specify the database, click Next, um, and then Kinesis, and then you can pick an input and output string, which is what I was describing, and then JSON, and then come in here and add a column value or uh, column name and then you can choose uh, a group of different uh, formats so that's all i did um, on this front sorry for not switching tabs there um, but this uh, is giving me a, uh, a second to explain that to you so we have an input table which is just you know the value in string and then we're going to strip out the first uh, field in that in that uh, packet coming through, and we're going to send it to our output table. That is, uh, and that sending it to the output table is the same thing as sending it uh, to the stream in Kinesis um, that we specified before. So going back here, um, notebook is still taking a little bit. I had this like, same experience earlier, and I'm not sure if it's the first time you create a database, or the first time you create a table, or if it's the first time you create a notebook. Um, I'm guessing it's the first time 
uh, every time you start up notebook is, is my guess, but we'll give this a second. This takes much longer. I might actually just pause this and save you guys the the trouble. If you're watching this video, you should probably just skip ahead. And uh, the only thing to know is that this is taking a while. Aha! Okay, so now we click open in Apache Zeppelin, and I will remember to share this tab. There we go. All right, so Apache Zeppelin, we're going to create a new note. We're going to call it as demo note. Full interpreter flink. Great. Ah, uh, demo not, huh? We'll fix that. Great. So. Uh, the Zeppelin experience is uh, akin to Jupiter, uh, if you've used that before. Um, and we're going to copy paste some code now. Uh, so first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that input stream is working right now. I will run that. So um, actually, I should take the note out because I don't think that uh, Flink SQL will be very happy with that note. Uh, it's not letting me cancel the job. All right, we'll come back to it. So the actual job is going to look something like this. So uh, with Flink SQL, we're specifying that. We're specifying what we're trying to do here. Um, we're specifying demo output table, uh, which is the table we created a little bit ago. And then we're specifying from the data input table. This is a gory bit of regex that is basically stripping out the uh, first field. Um, and you can see why. Um, the board, oh, all right. Boom. Run that again without the comments in it. And if I click here, hopefully this will work. It did earlier, um, but I have changed the names of some of the tables and stuff like that. So we'll see. So these are running. Um, in the background and firing up a flink job does take a second uh, for deploying containers and whatnot uh, to scale the compute. Now this is started. Uh, this looks like it's running. I would expect that uh, pretty soon we'll start seeing, oh, you know, access denied. This did happen before. So I skipped a step. And uh, this is actually an important step if you're ever trying to use Kinesis, which is we need to get over into uh, IM. I'm going to share this tab. So what it just told us was, hey, the, the user that you're using to uh, basically run this notebook um, and access both Kinesis and Glue uh, does not have access to all those things. So fair enough. We will go and do that. Um, we need to go into roles and um, let's see, demo notebook. This is this is our guy, I believe. Uh, I am not an expert on AWS permissions, so we will find this out together. So we're going to click on here. We're going to say how about glue? Uh, I'm making this look easier than it is because I spent quite a bit of time figuring this out earlier today. 
um, we're going to specify all resources. So I'm kind of doing an any, any here, all resources, all actions um, with the goal of hopefully just getting this to work uh, without further ado. Um, I think I accidentally expanded something and now it won't let me, it won't let me, let me close. Yeah, that worked. All right. So this should work. We're going to create the policy and call this demo policy. And what we're doing is we're assigning permissions to glue to our user for that notebook. And I think that that will work. But again, I am not an expert when it comes to AWS permissions, and I don't really think they're made very intuitively. All right, so here we go. We're back into our demo space. Great. Um, I do want to point out that we created the uh, decodable uh, pipeline in a matter of a couple minutes, and we are 15 minutes into this. Um, so if I click uh, run all paragraphs, hopefully, instead of saying access denied, instead we'll see uh, some pretty good input coming through. If not, we're going to have to go back and double check permissions again. Access denied again. So they definitely said this user can use this demo notebook. Yep. It's not allowed to list shards. Okay. So we need to go back here, add permissions, create inline policy. Um, and we need to give this person this, this notebook can we says, we need to give them permissions for everything. Um, and we want to specify all resources. Okay, here we go. And Kinesis demo. Got it. Create the policy that should be in there. Okay, so this is our user, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, it'll work this time. I'll run all paragraphs and we will find out. I believe that this error was from last time. Yes, it must be. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is just selecting from our input stream. We can see that uh, that data is actually flowing. This job is still pending, uh, but this is the one that's going to insert into our output stream. It still says pending. And in the meantime, here I will copy paste a little bit of code that we will need to verify that our output stream is receiving. That's still pending. It's also not letting me add a paragraph, so this is kind of freezing up on me a little bit. I think that this error message was before because this one still says pending. If I click on the view flink job, it takes me into this space and says, no, actually, it's not pending. It does look like it failed. Um, I'm going to have to figure out figure out why. It's a global failure. Um, the other one ran, so this one really should have permissions. Um, the code it looks right. Yeah, uh, so the job failed during the initialization of job manager. I think there's some useful information here. Unfortunately, it's not actually I can't copy paste it without grabbing the whole screen and it keeps flashing. And even if I try to zoom out or zoom in, I, I can't actually see that, that language. Um, let me go back to, let me go back to my demo notebook. Um, 
this says that it worked, right? It says took 46 seconds, uh, etc. cetera. Um, nuclear output, just stay clean here. But the, when I go to the flink job, it, it says it failed. So it's not clear to me that it, it obviously didn't work. When I click run, the exact same thing happens uh, another time. Um, it's not telling me now uh, what security permissions that I'm missing. Um, before uh, it was indicating I didn't have access to Kinesis, but we'll go over to the shared tabs here. Uh, this is the, the user that this is being run under. Um, I have uh, full Kinesis access is basically any, any, right? Um, same thing for Kinesis Data Analytics. Um, I just added that. And then also uh, any, any for glue. So I'm not sure what's going on with this shop. Well, now it does say it's running. So that's really good. That might be forward progress. Um, yeah, you know, look at this. So, so far, this looks like it actually ran this time. So the first time it failed for lack of permissions because it didn't have the Kinesis data analytics permissions, just Kinesis and glue and needs the KDA. Um, the second time, I have no idea why it failed. I haven't changed anything between the second and third time. Um, but this does look like it's running. It doesn't look like it has any exceptions. It's Everything's green. Um, well, that was interesting. Um, it was showing something at the bottom and it's not showing that anymore in terms of uh, the throughput. Oh, there we go. Now it's back. That was strange. So it says running, but it's saying zero bytes received. Um, this is very odd because I ran this exact pipeline uh, you know, just a couple hours ago and this worked perfectly. It says that it's running. Um, it says that it's happy. You know, when I run this one, it, it does show that the uh, demo input table which is what we're pulling from right here is receiving data um and it'll start printing out here in just a second the only other thing that i can think of doing is here maybe i can just go ahead just go ahead and run this one as well. Yeah, so you can see the demo input table. Ah, there we go, runtime exception. So this whole time it was green saying it was running, but it was not running. Um, and then it looks like it retried three times while we just kind of troubleshot here um, without any details. Job failed and caused by job ID failed, job execution failed. I don't see so this is one of the challenges. Um, I'll put my decodable hat back on. This is one of the challenges with Kinesis data analytics is ultimately like you're running Flink, right? So you have all the gory details of Flink and watermarking, etc. cetera. Um, you're not just working with SQL, you're, you're running Flink. So you're going to see uh, these Java errors, execution failure handler. Hmm. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say security. Um, my Java is a little rusty, rusty, but uh, I don't see anything clear here. It's just saying the get records operation failed. And again, so right here, demo input table, uh, the data is clearly going through. We clearly, this, this uh, notebook clearly has access to that because these are just two paragraphs in the same output. Uh, in the same notebook, I mean, um, demo input table right here, um, you know, from demo input table, um, insert into demo output table. Um, you know, I might have to admit failure here in that I don't know why Kinesis Data Analytics isn't running this. Uh, this is literally copy paste code uh, from just a couple hours ago. So this should work great. Um, I guess if that tells you something in terms of how easy is it to use Kinesis Data Analytics, 
uh, this now you kind of you feel my pain. <laughs> You've gone through it with me at least. Uh, so uh, you know, I'll, I'll just wrap up and say you know, there's a couple other uh, services out there in Azure. I think they have. Well, Google has their data flow. I think Azure has a version of data flow as well. And those are kind of their competitors in terms of data analytics. But in any case, I will uh, hope that you go to decodable.co uh, and give our, our service a try. I think you'll find it a lot easier. You're not going to see uh, Java exceptions and that type of a thing. Thanks for watching.